but now um, I'm doing it this way. And partly because when you do have your lining and everything in here, this is kind of a fracture point here. Yeah. You know? I mean, if you do stress, over stress it, but, um, and here and here. And with, with this here, it's more of a gradual transition. And it's more insurance than, you know, because I really haven't had any problems with it. But it just in my mind, I'm going, you know, I'd rather have more security. And this normally would also have, this is just a, no, wait a minute. This is a top. I was going to try it without the redwood just to see how it goes, you know, and whether or not I really need to have it because the redwood that I had was out of a big board that came from Alicia Carter and uh, Bob Ruck. Uh, was going to make tops out, and he decided he didn't want to, and it was a big hunk of redwood, and I said, yeah, I'd love to have it, and uh, getting quality redwood in a, you know, a big piece of wood is um, kind of difficult, yeah. and, uh, you know, I've thought of all kinds of different things, though, like maybe hollowing this out in a similar fashion to this, and then using a more dense red, um, honeycomb in, in it, and they come in, well, these are samples oh, that okay. the, uh, the people that make honeycomb have to keep these for two years. They have to cut pieces out of the pieces that they, uh, that they sell to industry, and usually it's for the aircraft industry. And they have to have it, I suppose, for, you know, quality assurance and so forth, and, you know, so they can come back and maybe see what that piece was like or something. And then they, you know, they can sell it as a sample you want it. In fact, there's a guy out in Virginia that's, it's an international company that manufactures all kinds of composite materials and he said he read the article in Premier Guitar about me because mm -hmm. he has a, you know, search engine out there that always uh, picks up on honeycomb. And he called me, he says, we just throw this stuff away, it goes to the goes to the landfill. He says, would you like it for the cost of shipping? And I said, you bet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, all kinds. Because this, it comes in eighth inch cells, it comes in um, quarter inch cell, it comes as honeycomb shape, it also comes as over expanded where you, they pull it a little bit more this way so that this hole is a little oblong. Mm -hmm. Right now this has a directional stiffness, it's less stiff this way and more stiff this way. Really? Yeah. Uh, and in the ribbon direction, they call it the ribbon direction because these individual, this is a two sheets right here that are glued together, you know. Uh, and what they do is they, they have a sheet that they lay down and then they have, uh, I, I don't know what the bonding method is, but I'm assuming it's some kind of an instant bonding where they lay another sheet on top of it and then they bond it at these rows. Mm -hmm. And then they lay another sheet on top of that and they bond it offset at another row. And then they put another sheet down and bond it at another row. And it goes back and forth. Then they've got this plate of all these sheets and then they expand it. And it, it comes in a four foot by four foot by eight foot block then. And uh, when they expand it then, then they dip it into uh, a resin that, that fixes it. They just, you know, they take it down like this and pull it out. And, and the thick, and also the thicker it is, they, they double dip it. If the lighter stuff, they don't. But this is like, um, I think this is an eight pound per cubic foot. Mm -hmm. The stuff that you generally use for a top is 1.8 pound per cubic foot, which is the lightest that you can get. And this is nine pound per cubic foot, and it's you know I mean it's like a like a board, yeah. and you can see the this stuff. You know, of course it's thinner, but you can tell that it is a lot thinner and a lot lighter. Yeah, and uh, that's one point eight. So anyway, that's that. You lay that into uh, like a board like this. I take a a top that isn't you know worth anything. And I spread uh, Gorilla Glue on it, uh, just polyurethane glue with a roller. And I know what my roller is up here. Uh, a rubber brayer. You know, it's something like this, but smaller. So something that's you know about like that. Mm -hmm. And I I dribble this onto it um, at a specific weight so that I know the the 
film thickness is what I want because when you lay this into it, you don't want it collecting a whole lot. And of course, the longer you leave it in it too, the more it picks up. But when you've then laid it into that glue, then you take it and you transfer it to this. And I tape the edges here. And then that goes into a vacuum press. And uh, it takes about an hour and a half. Um, it's uh, uh, fixed uh, with moisture that's already in the air. Uh, it can go down to, I've, I've heard some of you say, well, they don't like this stuff because it makes the, the skin potato chip. And I think what they're doing is they're actually spritzing this with water, which it'll just curl up, you know. And uh, the Gorilla Glue people say that if you've got 15% relative humidity, you don't need to, you don't need to wet it. And I've never had any problems. The other thing that people complain about about it is that it does foam. Um, I don't know if I have any examples of it, but like if you glue two pieces of wood together, the, the, it, it does expand. It expands three to four times its original um, uh, size. And when it squeezes out of the edges, you'll have foam. That's, uh, polyurethane is what they use for insulation, like they squirt it into the walls and stuff and it foams up. And it's the same type of stuff. But if you don't use too much, it doesn't foam. And this is, let's see, there's a little foaming in this. Like I said, this isn't a top though. I don't have a rosette in it. But anyway, this is, you know, this is the, the outcome of it. And the, the, the thing about the, the pockets, the way I'm doing it, is that you get a, a gradual transition of both the wood and the honeycomb. Yeah, you can see that. Thing. It feathers here, and then it kind of feathers in there. So then this goes on, you know, I spread the honeycomb, or I spread the Gorilla Glue on this at a specified weight, and then it goes on here. Generally, I spread it on until it just stays a little glossy. You know, as you're spreading it on, it kind of kind of get dull, like it's soaking in. Uh, I do it till it kind of just stays glossy, because you don't you don't need a lot. And uh, I mean, um, I've never heard of one delaminating or separating or anything. And mm -hmm. the, the cots and the twins just beat the crap out of my guitars. I mean, it just <laughs> they just beat the crap out of them. In fact. Um, they, they do a lot of flamenco stuff, and, and they are cedar tops, so they are going to be more, you know, tender. And they had um, uh, five thousandths tap plates on their guitars, and uh, they were in San Francisco, and they decided to send them to me to do some re repair work on them and put some um, um, pickups in. and. Um, when I pulled, they wanted they wanted a heavier tap plate. <clears throat> when I pulled that tap plate off, there was a circle right here on Zoltan's guitar where it, the wood was pulverized down to the honeycomb. Just pull. I mean, it was just dust. Mm -hmm. It was just nothing but dust. And I ended up just sanding that with some fairly coarse sandpaper, so it kind of created a little bit of a dip. I have maybe some of the yeah. This was actually about the size of the of the place because that's the actual piece that I used. Yeah. And you know, you've got a fairly thick piece of uh, uh, felt that um, went over the area, and I made a you know I made a thin piece of uh, cedar that went into that dip, and then put a propped underneath, uh, made a call underneath, put this on top, put a flat board on top of that, and then clamped it from both sides. And then of course this squeezed it down in, and I used the Gorilla Glue on it. And then when it was dry, I just, you know, shaved the edges and sanded it flat, and that was the repair. It worked great, you know. Nothing separated though, you know. And uh, uh, so I, I think that has been a very good proof of the, the technology of this top, you know. I have heard, uh, um, well, I haven't heard any people, but 
Gernot Wagner kind of voiced the thing that he, I guess he's heard people say that uh, they, people are afraid that they, they delaminate and stuff. And uh, they just don't, they really don't.